<laughs> Are we got it. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Hi everyone. My name's Kaya and this is Femme Fatal Gals in conversation today with the amazing Helena. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yes, so I'm Helena, I'm a tattoo artist based in Leicester and I'm a brown woman. <laughs> I don't know what I'm a brown woman. <laughs> I'm an Indian woman and yeah, my pronoun, pronouns are she and her, by the way. Well, she and her. Yay! Yeah. So I met Helena about maybe two or three years ago now. I Say about two years ago, yeah. Yeah, like maybe two, it was li literally at the start of when I started Femme actually. And you yeah. did this. She <laughs> looks so good. I love her. her favorite. And I'm literally <laughs> obsessed with you well, after I <laughs> came back because I was like, wow, I've just, I've just never seen anything like it. Just oh. I didn't really know much about tattoos at that point. And then so for my, I had a stick and poke before, but for my first tattoo to be done by a woman and then to go in the studio and you were so friendly. And I was like, oh. I want every experience to be <laughs> <laughs> and I Set the bar high. I said it really high. I feel like it should be like that though. I feel like I'm not to like big myself up too much, but I, I love my space so much. Like it's literally, it, it feels really calm and it doesn't feel scary. It doesn't smell scary. Like it's just, that's how a studio should be. Like it's, I feel like it's quite inviting. All the plant babies. Yes, all the plant babies. <laughs> I love my plant babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So yeah, I wanted to talk to you because obviously you are a big inspiration to me um, and as I'm where I am personally in my life, I've been thinking about what I want to do in the future and how I want to be a boss businesswoman. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's a difficult <laughs> journey. I've kind of found just trying to navigate spaces where I live on my own um, and learn about business. And I went to like um, two years ago. I went to a business meeting. You know, in like basically. Okay. And the guy was just like he didn't understand me he was old he laughed at me and he said like um you know it's really hard to do anything because the economy is failing and it just wasn't helpful somebody told me this as well they were like oh you shouldn't get into tattooing because the economy is so bad and i was just like it's so unhelpful when they <laughs> say things <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's always gonna be bad like there's never ever gonna be the right time to like do something but I feel like if you really want to do it go and do it and then exactly. people will come along if they're interested in what you've got to offer exactly. then of course they're gonna join you we need useless things as well so I don't know why it's like I can't leave failing tattoos <laughs> have no point other than to be pretty you know but everyone <laughs> needs to feel pretty so what's exactly. the point like the issue. I think we will never, <laughs> ever, ever go out of business. I don't think. I don't think so either. I feel like the like trendiness of them always like fluctuates, but like I feel like everyone will always kind of like there'll always be a group of people that'll be like, yeah, tattoos are sick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're so unique with your style as well. So I guess kind of what I wanted to ask you first, or kind of talk around. Um, um, is about race in the tattoo industry because I know you spoke about that in some of your videos on social media during Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter. Um, I wanted to talk about race and just how you kind of navigated your career um, as an Indian woman, if you want to. So, <laughs> um, when I first decided that I wanted to go into tattooing, I obviously didn't see any Indian people that did tattoo. So I was like, okay, so the way that I'll get into the industry is if I like draw more like Eurocentric sort of design. So I drew a lot of white ladies, I drew a lot of like white men. Um, it was all very like neo-traditional kind of like oh. Eurocentric designs. Cause I was like, if I don't look too Indian, then maybe I'll get a job somewhere. <laughs> so I kind of like tried to whitewash myself in order to get a job. But then my first apprenticeship that I actually got, the guy was like, oh, I hired you because Indians work hard. And I was like, oh, cool, being Indian got a job. And then thinking back at it, I was like, he really thought this was like 
wow. like Colombia, India, where they're like building a train track or something. Like, I don't know. Like, this is what I was, doing. I was like, that's the kind of mentality that he had. I was like, and then obviously I wasn't the little obedient slave girl that he thought I was gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he was like, nah, I don't feel like you want it as much as um, you, you made out to do. And I was like, I do, I just don't put up with your shit. Like it's, it's very different. <laughs> wow, and isn't that funny though, how you originally started thinking that you had to draw um, in a very whitewashed way, but you've actually found the most success for just being your- <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> never thought that would happen because I like to draw because so basically my mum used to draw a lot and she used to draw like little Indian women wearing saris and like put like with pots over their heads it's so cute wow. um and I never thought that I would be able to draw like that and get anywhere but now here I am drawing yeah. so, pots on their heads so and people love it because I feel like now more than ever especially in the last five years we're all learning to like love ourselves again and especially because like like the industries and everything and like fashion and all these whitewashed companies <laughs> they all kind of find like cool quirks about our cultures and then they're like oh I like this so we're gonna take it and be like well you took this out of me for good and it's like, <laughs> yeah a cultural appropriation and it's like so like when I started tattooing I was like oh my god so many people love like Hindu deities and lots of like henna inspired stuff but then if I did it, I'd look too Indian. Do you know what I mean? I feel it kind of makes me look like, I don't know, like I don't want to assimilate to the to being Western, you know? And it, that was a big fear of mine. I didn't want people to think like that I was very set in my Indian ways. But the thing is, I was born and raised here. Mm. I've had the best of both worlds. And me doing a lot of Indian inspired pieces is my way of reclaiming my culture. Like I'll sit here wearing like a slip dress because this is my Western culture, but like, <laughs> like my but tattoo is- As well. Yeah. <laughs> I can do, yeah, I can do both. You know, I am both. And I feel like people don't understand that they can do both. It's yeah. Weird. I feel the same thing as like a, a black girl. Uh, <laughs> I talk about this a lot in, in the fact that there is a part of me that loves like Megan Stallion and Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's another part of me that likes tattoos and likes rock music and likes a lot of yeah. other things. And I think it's important that we are allowed to have the spaces to be able to be more than what they try and put us in the box to be. Like, yeah, yeah we're allowed to be more than one um what's the word facet a facet's a good word i guess <laughs> i'm not yeah, sure what it means but it sounds <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're not as people none of us can just be boxed into one culture we're not two-dimensional you know there's so much to us we've had like these i know like we're, we're quite young you know but like we've still had a very long time and we've been exposed to so many different things yeah. like in my family, I'm the only pa well, I was the only person that had tattoos. Mm -hmm. I was the only person that listened to rock music. I was the only person that wanted to colour their hair funky colours. Like yeah. I was the only person that did all that. And like now, majority wise, I'm still the only person that does it. But it's like just because I'm Indian doesn't mean I can't do those things. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Like yeah. doesn't mean it's weird as well. Like, do you ever feel like sometimes when you go to gigs and stuff, like when I was younger? Just there's a brown person yeah here. Like, oh my god it's so shocking that you're here it's like why is this shocking i'm always like this you spoke about this in your videos about being a minority and um whenever i go to a concert or something i'm just like is there any other like indian people <laughs> like where are the brown people yeah, and, like, I, will, I will find myself searching for them because i'm like oh my god brown people listen to this kind of music too but like majority of the time i went to like my first festival last year and there was only like one other set of brown girls I saw, and they actually knew who I was, and I was like, oh. that's not. But like, <laughs> why is the pot so small? Yeah. Why is the pot so tiny? <laughs> is it so tiny? It's a it shame is. as well, because I wonder, like, to not to generalize things, I know that a lot of people who are black and brown and of different ethnicities enjoy music from their cultures. Yeah. 
Is that a divide of like we can't enjoy certain things or is it just <laughs> those places? Can we not go to those places because we don't feel welcome? Do we not go to certain tattoo places because we don't feel welcome? That's like, the issue though, because I feel like it, when I am, um, so I basically, you probably saw it, I asked my followers, like the like black indigenous people of color, what it's like for them to get tattooed like when it's like time to find an artist when they're trying to see what works with their with their skin like um how they've experienced being tattooed by a white person and the results were shocking like some of it was really hard to read because i was like you shouldn't ever have to put up with stuff like that you shouldn't ever have to feel like you're going to be turned away from getting tattooed by someone because you're brown mm -hmm. and i feel like you might have this as well, but like whenever I find an artist on Instagram and I'm just like, oh my God, your work's so cool. I really want to get tattooed by you. And then you don't see any brown people on their, on their page and you're like, are you racist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, will you want to tattoo? Like, I, for me, it's, it's less of the are you racist thing, but it's more just of like the actual fear of then going to get the tattoo and thinking that they're going to feel a certain way about me, which is definitely yeah. probably all in my head, but it is a real... <laughs> It will, it does happen. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying that it does because I remember when I got, I got one of my tattoos, I'm not going to show which one it was. Um, <laughs> I, I, it was by, a, um, she was an Indian. I don't, I don't really know what her ethnicity was. Um, mm. But when I got there, she was like, oh, you're Indian. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, um, and then the person in the, the room was just like, where in India are you from? And I was like, well, I'm not from India. Like, I was born <laughs> here. <laughs> and then he was just like yeah but like where are you from though and I was just like well if you're asking like where my heritage is I'm Gujarati so from Gujarat in India and they're like yeah but like where is that and I was like it's a state oh. in India and they kept going and I was like why ask like why why do you anyway? need to know like it wasn't even like a genuine interest it literally he was like oh you're Indian but you don't even know where you're from and I was like I'm just I just think they feel better about themselves or to like work on their own like insecurities about being yeah. around someone who isn't white but yeah. it's uncomfortable just yes. it was a lot right. but the thing is I feel like they didn't realize that you're in a vulnerable position like if it was just like me just like talking to somebody and they came at me that way I'd be like I would tell them off mm. but I would getting tattooed I was in pain I was like I was like tired it's a lot to go through and then in the background somebody's like drilling you about your own culture and it's like you like to take inspiration from my culture but when somebody Indian comes into the room you don't actually know how to talk to them right right or you <laughs> down about their own culture <laughs> it's insane it's uh, it's a lot it's a lot I feel like the thing with cultural appropriation, I said this in my video as well, like I have no issue with people wanting to like use Indian artwork if they're genuinely interested, if they want to learn about it, if like like they feel this connection and they want to do everything in their power to like respect that culture. But if you're somebody that's never even spoken to an Indian person before, get out. Right. It's like simple, like stop it. It's not for you. It really isn't. It really isn't. I just feel like you have to ask yourself, especially when it comes to like um, certain gods as well, um, and and um, like symbols. I don't really know what the correct <laughs> is, but you can't just look at something like that and go, "It's pretty. I want it on me." It's like, do you really <laughs> research the the culture, the background, what it means to certain people? Why do you want it on you as well? Like, why is it that you need to have this on you? Right. You want it because it looks cool. Shut exactly. up. <laughs> exactly. It's so annoying. It's so oh. annoying. So yeah, that was kind of um, what I wanted to talk about with that. But I guess in terms of um, just so you own your well you rent um francis <laughs> a boss <laughs> um just kind of have you faced any like um stigmas around that or obviously we spoke a bit before we press record about mm -hmm. how um it was difficult for you to get into that space and to take mm -hmm. it on and i just think um for me personally in my journey i feel I watch girls in my community who are trying to do a similar thing to me 
um, who have started around the same time and not to be like, oh, woe is me, I have it so hard. But there are things that people don't even, like people are very quick to try and tear me down. Um, um, things that I do or to try and get in competition with me. But I laugh sometimes because I'm like, you are not my competition. The world as a black yeah. man is my, yeah. is my, not competition, but it's what I have to face. I don't have time to. Yeah. Yeah, because like just from all angles, people like leave you out, abandon you from things. You don't get um the chance to talk about things. You are overlooked. Um, people. And don't then you feel it. afraid to like talk about things as well. Like you wanted to talk about your experience as a black woman, and I feel like only now because of Black Lives Matter, people are going to listen to you. Yeah, I felt that like with everything that I've spoken about with cultural appropriation, like the only reason people are listening to me is because they're like, oh shit, there is a problem in the world. Let's talk about it. And it's like, we've yeah, been now. telling you this. We have been screaming this at you for so long and you don't want to listen because it's right. all like creating barriers. You're focusing on the divide. And it's like, no, this affects our lives. Like That is the divide. <laughs> the fact that they don't want to talk about the divide. Yeah, that they is the divide. <laughs> and it's a silent struggle. So like, um, when I first started Femme, I was talking about ha my hair struggles. In my first, okay. first scene, I was talking about um, my struggles with identity because it was like female empowerment, but it was more my own female empowerment of how um, just everything I was trying to overcome in myself, which was, yes, feminism as an issue on its own, and then like dealing with race and racism on top of that. And that is what I try and explain to people in terms of business. It's like, yes, business is hard, but then I also have the race aspect as yes. well, which is a whole nother yeah. challenge. So why do you have anything to say on that? Oh, I remember like telling my, um, he wasn't my boss, but somebody that I worked with was, I was like, um, a struggle as a minority. And he was like, you're not a minority because the population of India is like this much. And I was like, oh, <laughs> why do you read? I was like, you as a white man have just told me that I'm not a minority. Look around, look around this industry. Everyone looks like you. Nobody looks like me. When I go to conventions, I'm the only person of color most of the time. When there's artists, like I was speaking to um, this magazine in India, um, and they were like, they've got conventions there, but they're all taken up by white artists. Like you barely see Indian artists in conventions in India. In India. Yeah. And I was like, uh, that's not hard for me to believe because, to be honest, so all the like the hippies and yogis and all that. Oh, for they like they there and like that means there's no room for people like me. There's no room for people like you, you know, there's no room for yeah. Right. <laughs> oh my god, it's a joke. And the thing is is if we tell them about this, then they're just like, well you're creating the divide where we're trying to appreciate your colour, but you're like yeah, one. cool. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we are. And we are. That is true. We are all one. However, we can't be all one until... If you're taking up the air. <laughs> yeah, because we're not treated with representation. We don't make the... We can't all be one until yeah. there are more um, black and brown speakers around. Oh, where have you gone? There they oh, are. sorry. Speakers. My phone <laughs> rang me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't be all one until, you know, we do panel discussions and it's it's more normal to see more diverse races than just half no. of them and then two people from different backgrounds. You know what, like, impresses me so much is because, like, white people don't notice that there's, like, no diversity. I know that sounds, I, I know how that sounds, but it's like, if you go to like India and you do a convention or if you tattoo Indian artwork and you don't see any Indian people, they don't see that as an issue. You know, they don't, they're, they're like, oh, there's a lot of white people here for a convention in Hell India. Yeah. Like, they don't sad. see That's it. That's so true. They don't <laughs> recognize They don't see it. They don't recognize that they are the majority. They will, they will say, and it's until, until you get them in a room full of brown people. And oh then, my god, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, What the 
to oh. be like a convention yeah. for like POCs and yeah. like the white one white person be like, this is what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even in friends sometimes in like my friendship groups, um, like all the different communities, sometimes I'll go and no one will notice when but when it's just me as the only black person. But then when it's the opposite, it's like, oh. 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 And they all make comments about it subconsciously because you know it's playing on their mind. <laughs> to be honest, I do this a lot as well because like like my group of friends they're all white, so whenever we go somewhere, I have to actively say, this place is too white for me, yes. okay? Like I literally, I will say it out loud. It's like, it's too white for me. I cannot deal with this. And they'll be like, no, it's okay, look, there's a brown person. I'm like, no. no it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. Like, I'm not saying that I want to just be surrounded by brown people, but I'm saying I want a mix, you know? Because like, I think they don't realize when you're the only person of color in a room, you kind of feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. Right, it's harmful. It's so harmful. You yeah, and it's it. weird. You internalize like it. it. You feel like yeah. you, you become self-aware of it, and then you feel, you end up feeling like, oh my God, so now I'm in this space that not a lot of people of color are in, so now I have to act a certain way so that... <laughs> will allow me to they be don't have a bad idea of what brown people black people look like or yeah, act like exactly. and it's a whole uh, <sighs> dance to you all day <laughs> but yeah. all the people of our ancestry please yeah. stop it yeah exactly so kind of what i wanted to talk about following on from that is well i suppose we've kind of touched on it a little bit but the creative industry just in general um like mm -hmm. tattoo conventions like the art world um i know yeah. me in you know there are a lot of zines and magazines now which are run by people of color specifically only for people yeah. of color. um but and there's festivals like i've been to one festival that was specifically for people of color a zine festival oh amazing they yeah. probably got it does make all the difference from going to one zine festival which is obviously run by white people and being one of the only black people to going to one where you look around and it's just all kinds of colors and you're just like ah oh, yeah i'm just yeah like, my art now yeah talk to anyone there like i can talk to people on either side of me and be like hey can you give me some advice hey can you help me out and I like, yeah. have like a similar like feeling to you you know there's like a collectiveness and it's kind of like you all have the same struggle not the same struggles but like similar struggles and you all feel the same way about things that's what the yeah. beauty of these spaces designed just for us is because i went to um asian women's festival last year in march and i was like oh my god look at this that's so cool and it's just a space for like brown artists and like small businesses run by like asian people and i was like this is sick this is amazing <laughs> them. they understand yeah. the struggle but isn't it so sad though that it has to be reduced to like one event a year to be oh it is inclusive because there's this festival that you guys have put on like um what i'm just gonna say it when i was in this <laughs> amazing panel talk yesterday um there was one comment by the host which really rubbed me the wrong way and for the rest uh -huh. of the thing i just couldn't enjoy it and then today i was like you were just bitter and it's true i was <laughs> but like i don't know she probably just said it flippantly but she said some we were talking about um how there's not enough um well and not a not enough people of color, whatever their color is or backgrounds, um, feel like they have access to sex toys and blah, 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 and all of these things because obviously they're, I don't know, because it's not accessible to them in terms of they can't really speak about sex and stuff with their families and stuff. It's shameful in certain cultures. Mm -hmm. And the woman um, who was hosting, she said something like, um, yeah i would love to see no i we really need to see i would really like to see more um people of color starting their own um sex toy businesses and starting these things and speaking about it more and it just rubbed me the wrong way because i was like 
okay, I'll just add that to my to-do list. Do you know what I mean? Of oh yeah, okay, I'll I'll just add like um starting a sex toy business onto my thing and I'll just like they don't it was just the ignorance from you don't uh, even know what the culture right. goes through to first to even be able to get to the point to then go I want to start a business to then have to go to the point of the issues around starting a business to then yeah. it just the, ugh, no you were right to feel that way because it was it just it's literally like well if you made the spaces more inclusive in the first place, maybe we have to feel like we have to do it all on our own you know I, exactly that's the thing that's why i felt isolated because it's the having to do it all on our own and that is why i was yeah. talking to you after i was like i'm so excited to speak. <laughs> because that's how i feel personally about everything like i have to do everything yeah. on my own i have to work out everything on my own and then when I do get into the spaces and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do this or I'm just going to do an unboxing. It's like, no, because if I'm in these rooms and I've gotten into these rooms as a black person, then if, like, if I've been given the microphone, then I have to go and make sure that I'm highlighting all of the issues for my brothers. Everything you do is so politicized. Like literally you as a person are politicized. So literally anything that you do, it has to be a political statement. And it's literally the same, like, I feel the same way as well, because I was, like, I got into tattooing because I wanted to tattoo, and then everyone was like, oh, you're breaking taboos, let me interview you, tell me about all the horrible things that have happened to you, and it's just like, why don't you want to know about my work? You yeah, know? Like, exactly. Like, I understand, like, I, I have somewhat, some sort of responsibility, because obviously coming from an Asian background, and then coming from the tattoo industry, which those those worlds don't collide all the time, you know, when I'm like one of the very few where it does collide. So I feel like I've got a responsibility to talk about it. And yeah. fine, I will talk about it. But the thing is, is like, it's not my job. Exactly. But you do feel like it is your job. And yeah. that's like where I struggle a lot because what goes from them being a fun experience to sitting in this panel discussion and everyone's talking about their lube, co their lube collections and their, I'm sat there going, my community, and not celebrating this or if there is there's a very small majority and yeah. I don't feel then that I really should be here without highlighting that because if I am highlighting that I'm not doing my job because I'm being ignorant to the fact that I know that mm -hmm. there are actually many barriers and many struggles that um they have to get through before they can join in on these fun liberating yeah, yeah I'm a white woman I'm, and I'm li liberated <laughs> sexually because I know that even black women are uh, fetish, fetishized, literally, even on... Without doubt. Right, like... You had to chocolate on a daily basis. <laughs> right. I've literally had that from... How are you? I've had exotic, and that fucks me up. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. no exotic! exotic. Oh. I'm not brown chocolate caramel. And I'll join in when someone says it to me, because you don't want to make it a thing, but it's literally just like... <sighs> Stop it. You're not eating me. Not have you seen gum. chewing gum by any chance? Have I seen Mean Girls? Um, no, chewing gum. I've seen a few episodes, but not all of oh. it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Okay, I'm going to spoil a little bit for you, but there's this episode. Yeah. You should have watched it by now, okay? You're I know. Playing. I did watch a few, but I don't know. I had something about it, <laughs> it annoyed me, to be honest. <laughs> oh, um, there was this one episode where she was like, um, she was seeing this white guy and he like took her to a jazz um, cafe or something. He was like, oh, do, don't you like jazz? And I think he just assumed because she was black that she liked jazz. And then when they got home and they were doing like, getting it on, he was like, oh, I'll be like your slave owner and this, that and the other. And she was like, whoa. <laughs> and I was like, did oh. you really? Like there's people out there that they they have this sort of like you know what <laughs> the, the annoying thing is though like it's not even that's not even just a line for TV those kind no, of no happens are regular yeah it happens this whole like colonialist um wonderland that they've created in their heads where they've got all the power oh sorry mister i just elbowed the dog on <laughs> 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 um 
<laughs> it's but yeah, it's kind of like the power thing. So where like because they're like the white superior that there's this like innocent little black or brown woman that will like subdue to every whim. And I feel like that kind of came into play when I got my first apprenticeship and he was just like, oh, brown people work hard and all sorts of mm. 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 And then, <laughs> oh, speaking of that as well, uh, um, from a black girl perspective, it's like, oh yeah, um, the sassy thing or the angry black girl thing. Because uh, if you actually stand up for yourself and you're like, you're not going to be submissive, is then you're like, oh, you're so sassy. So anytime I stand up for myself at all, it's like, I'm not being sassy. I'm literally. But sassy. even if you are sassy, it's not a fucking issue. Exactly, exactly. But it makes you feel like it is. Like, oh, oh, you're being, oh, oh, and it's just like I'm not being like that. If anyone else, if a white person was to to stand up to you right now, you you wouldn't think they were an angry black girl. No, be like, oh yeah, sorry, feel that way, darling. I I've got an attitude. <laughs> You would need to, though. You know, I feel like our generation, we were so aware of all the shit that goes wrong in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, of course we've got an attitude. Like, I say things to my mum, and I, like, I literally, like, we were talking about, like, the rate at which, like, white people get divorced compared to brown people. And she was just saying, yeah, they all get divorced. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> Stop it. Generalising. It's yeah. different. The culture is so much different to ours. We've got a culture of shame. So, like, if we were... Uh -huh into an awful marriage we would stay whereas they've got a culture where they don't care if they want to leave they'll just leave you know you're right especially in christian and in a lot of christian like yeah horses are sin so yeah literally have the worst husband in the world and and you can't do anything about it yeah because you feel like god will punish you if you get divorced yeah this um it's just this is just ridiculous and i was just like you can't just you can't just you know yeah I don't know. that's why i was getting so annoyed in that panel because it was just like you're not talking about these things and so a lot of women aren't liberated sexually and they're not feeling that this way because in their cultures and in their religions like these things are i see it even in my own family sometimes these fear, fears are very predominant like this is how lots of it's not just like oh they're gonna judge me it's like a very violent thing that they're f afraid of you know so you can't just be like oh they're pressed and it's just like but the thing is is like just being liberated in sex isn't everything you know like you can be a modest woman and be liberated you can yeah. like cut us out every day and be liberated like there's no one way to feel liberated exactly like my a lot of um well not a lot of um some of my a lot of my family well my family is extremely religious not my immediate family but my general mm. family, extremely religious lots of my uncles are priests and stuff and some of my family um cannot support my femme business because obviously what it stands for like my logo is uh boobs yeah <laughs> they obviously support me but um yeah like when i was doing my fundraiser for example one of my um i won't say that i love you by the way but one of my <laughs> family members couldn't um like actually support it because obviously with the church it's not allowed just in there so it is a real thing and so for me to come out and be talking about being sexually liberated and stuff it's like yes maybe in my private life I am very yeah. sexually liberated but at the same time it's not easy for everyone to go on social media and talk about these things and I do think it is a little bit of white privilege sometimes yeah and to recognize that at all yeah without a doubt i feel like um <laughs> i think we people from minority ethnicities we're very like bound in our cultures like we're very proud and we do carry a lot of things that we grew up with and we carry like the shame factor we carry our religion we carry all these mentalities but i don't think for white people they kind of understand that that's something that like you like our like cultural words but you know nothing about our mentalities our struggles our upbringings and yeah. like like our morals even you know? if they're toxic <laughs> like yeah even, even if they're, they're toxic we'll still do it because this, <laughs> that's not all it's not all we know but it's a very big part of like who we are as well and we can be that way with past like to be honest like 
even the way that I was like my family were just very much like you need to get a job you need to do this you need to do this and you have to have like this successful life I've not done all that <laughs> and mm. I've still found myself and for them it was like a big struggle but for me it's my form of liberation it doesn't mean like it's talking about sex openly isn't for everyone whether you're liberated or not it is not for everyone I feel like you should you shouldn't judge a whole group of people because that's not how they express themselves yeah yeah and I think like some people also just aren't there on their journey yet like I know this kind of culture we're always trying to push we should be doing this now and we should be doing this now and we should be doing this now but I feel like what I was realizing when in that discussion is that some cultures are not there yet their next step is just to talk yeah and (laughs) that's Talk about how I'm sad today, and yeah. they'd be like, "You're not depressed. You've just had a bad day." And it's like, "Mother, no, there's yeah. something wrong." With me. <laughs> Literally, just talking and like recognizing some of our own um, toxic traits within our own mm-hmm. communities. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. So uh, the kind of last two things I wanted to discuss. Well, we touched on one. Oh, we went full circle. <laughs> but um, I wanted to talk about, is there a lack of support resources in for black and brown people, people of colour, people of ethnic minorities um, in wanting to start uh, businesses or in spaces or just even in feeling included and supported? Because yeah. I know that is, that's the case anyway in Nottingham. Yeah. Um, so maybe what's it like in Leicester or so Leicester you've been to Leicester it's very multicultural you've got a lot of black and brown faces everywhere um but the thing is is like I didn't know of any like POC tattoo artists in Leicester until I joined (laughs) right I only joined like what three years ago so that that in itself is an issue and a half Mm. but I feel like when it comes to resources I think a lot of like we said earlier like white people just don't realize that there's an issue Mm. and then it falls down to us like there's a pressure on us that we need to be this representation and we have to do it well and we have to make a good impression on everyone because we're the face of like our whole fucking culture Mm -hmm. so i feel like in terms of resources the the um what's the word the job like the task of creating representation it's just on us. They don't care. They don't see the issue. Like, oh, brown people should do it. Black people should do it. And it's just Why like... Why don't they start their own thing? It's like, oh, I'll just add that. And that, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Because then on them, like, there's not really any space for me to talk about the things that I want to talk about. Because I'm trying to take on this issue and this issue and this issue and this yeah. issue. Yeah. One of the only black people doing something mm-hmm. that I try and speak for everyone. Like, okay, now you want me to add sex to the list. Okay, oh, now you want me to add this to the list. Literally, (laughs) everything. Like, there has to be a person, like, assigned to everything. And we have to talk about it from, like, as one person representing the entire culture. This said in my video, I don't represent all the thoughts and feelings of every Indian person on the planet, you know? Like, you don't represent the thoughts and feelings of every black girl on the planet, you know? Like, it's literally... I don't understand why. Yeah, even in those communities. (laughs) (laughs) This is enough, like, if you don't see that that everyone in the room looks like you, how does that, like, I don't understand how you can, like, walk around in the world and see that there's so many people of colour from every kind of, like, background that live in this space. Like, in England, we're so multicultural, but then you go into spaces that you love and that you specialise in. And the, it doesn't reflect the world that we actually live in. And that's but no, you don't that's see normal. that. That's it normal is. for them. That's normal. They think that's the way it is. Should be. It's like when I made that video and I said, if you, as a white person, walk into a pub and you see all white people in there, you're like, yeah. If yeah, you to walk in and see a group of like black or brown people or anyone from any different ethnicity, you would literally walk in as a white person and be like, oh, maybe there's some kind of function on. This is bizarre. <laughs> is this ending <laughs> you'd be like what's going on here it's not the normal oh. and that's a real problem that's a huge problem and it's a problem in the workspace um it's a problem when i feel like uh, to be honest a lot of uh, 
uh, people from ethnic minorities just don't go for those roles because they don't see themselves in it. So yeah. there's probably so many people who want to be tattoo artists, but they just don't see very many people. People that look like them. They don't think it's doable. They don't see anyone who... Um, so what's the easiest thing to do? Resort to where they do see people like them, in crime or in gangs. Yeah. Um, or spending all their time twerking. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then become more and more and more of a stereotype. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with those things. But I think that's why we don't see... Because um, there's no opportunity and there's no, like... There's no comfort in knowing, yeah, we, we allow, not allow, but we welcome people like you into our spaces. There's no effort to make it very clear that we make it, like, we want to make sure that you're comfortable here. And I feel like recently with Black Lives Matter, there was, like, this trend of, like, tattoo artists, like, posting all this, like, tattoos that they've done on black skin. And it's Oh, I like, saw that. The rest of your feed is white like you've literally gotten rid of all the color in the person's skin to fit your feet Did you post that where, no, I... so where someone was like um i don't know if you posted it or if i just saw it but there was this thing where this tattoo artist had like um edited like the brown skin people to be white for their tattoo feed yeah i've like, had it I've, I've had it done to me as well like i remember like seeing like going to a tattoo artist getting tattooed and then like they've just completely stripped the color from my skin and it's just like and the thing is is like I get South Asian inspired tattoos this is what the thing that presses me so much is because I trust this person to replicate my culture for me and I feel like as me as a brown person I should be able to get something from my culture from wherever you know and um the way that they just got rid of my skin tone completely. I was like, I, I look like a corpse. I don't look like that. They literally edit your skin to be white, to fit on their Instagram feed. Some people are like, won't even put me on their Instagram feed if they tattoo. I know, I've, I've, so many people have told me that, like they literally, like they just won't see their skin on, their, on the artist feed. And I'm just like, the thing is, is there's this weird aesthetic of like, oh, black ink on white skin, like a black on white. Hmm. That, but the thing is, is like, even white people aren't that white. You know? <laughs> but then also, I think, again, it stops some black people from even knowing that they're allowed to get tattoos. Like, Yes, I had so many people message me. And it's not even just about like my work. It's about I've never seen tattoos on skin that looks like mine. The it thing is... Like I'm, I don't even edit my photos. That's how it is. And I feel like it's not going to look perfect. You're going to be bleeding. You're going to be swelling because that's what a tattoo is. It's not supposed yeah. to look healed on yeah. the first day. God, you had yours. Probably look gross for a few days. <laughs> it's what it looks like. <laughs> the fashion making it look like healed and like flat. And yeah, I don't like know. my mum, she says something like, um, oh, I wouldn't get any tattoos. You know, it doesn't, I, it wouldn't really show up on my skin. She's darker than me. And I just thought so many people probably feel that way. And it's maybe. But you're, you're not the same color as the ink though. You're not, you'd like, you are black, but you're not ink black. <laughs> and if you don't see many black people on the tattoo pages, if you're looking at an artist that you really like and you're scrolling down and it's just white, 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 you're like, <laughs> How is this going to look on me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Leave it. Like, I feel like they don't realise how much money they're losing out because people will not go to... There's a, they can't just be like, oh, there's not a lot of um, brown people in my area. But the thing is, is people travel for tattoos. Like, you came to me from Nottingham. You know, like, people are willing to travel for tattoos. And the fact that no brown person is willing to travel to you and give you their money... You're, you're missing doing out on a whole thing, like... I even think like when I want, and a lot of people get ta go to tattoo artists based on the style that they want, right? But sometimes yeah. like, well, maybe I don't want a certain tattoo in um, Helena's particular style, but if I'm thinking about what I want to get next, I will go to you. <laughs> Because, do you know what I mean? Because I just know that one, it's going to be done beautifully and two, it's going to be a safe environment. Like, I, I don't know why I've, I've only ever been um, as to get my stick and poke done um, mm -hmm. by someone amazing, super mm -hmm. nice, super supportive. But the rest of my tattoos have been done by women. 
mm-hmm. and just the like and around Nottingham or Leicester <laughs> in the East Midlands but even the thought of like traveling somewhere to like go to London to get the, the studio it just it's it's scary it's so daunting like I booked in for a tattoo with um Roxanne and um she was the one that was talking to him and I was like does he know that I'm brown what if he what if I get there and they just kind of look like he doesn't want a tattoo because I'm brown. the thing is it's like I don't consider myself dark I've never experienced colorism like I've never I've never been oppressed for the shade of brown I am you know so I'm kind of like oh I'm like a medium tone I'm an ex- socially acceptable tone of brown yeah. so maybe it'll be okay but even then I still one I still worry like no if you're not brown, are really... they gonna have an issue like yeah or even just is it gonna be uncomfortable like I know everyone must yeah about getting tattoos generally but like I don't know sometimes I'm just like oh. it's like an added pressure because I don't know if you heard of um all the stories that came out with like there was awful, awful men in the industry that were abusing their clients, like, sexually and just, like, taking advantage of them. But the thing is, is, like, as a woman, you have those fears when you get tattooed. Then as a brown woman, you have the added fear of they might be racist and they might sexually assault me and they might take advantage of me and they're going to take my money and they're going to hurt me. Like, they might not talk to me and they might hate me and I'm just going to have to yeah. sit for an hour just, like, mm, God. It's, there's so <laughs> many, like fears that it's going to be an uncomfortable situation the reason there's so many fears is because white people don't make the effort to make us know that we're we're going to be okay in their spaces yeah. you know they don't explicitly show artwork on brown people that they tattoo they don't explicitly show their flash on brown paper or yeah. like brown black background maybe like, it's had like loads of black people or brown people being tattooed but if you've chain edited it also it looks white <laughs> then again how do i know that i could come yeah um, no it's literally like it's it's messed up and the thing is it's not even about like resources because we have the internet we have no reason to be ignorant you know but people are ignorant because it doesn't affect them so it obviously doesn't happen <laughs> mm, exactly oh. <laughs> i feel a mix of joy and anger <laughs> This is what we need, though. I feel like when we come together collectively, we all have like the same kind of thoughts on things that we've experienced. It is it's that it's like, oh my god, I'm so glad you understand, but how <laughs> shit is it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I just feel like it's funny because there's nothing that we say, even in our different races, that there's yeah. nothing to say that we're like, oh really? It's always like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it just goes to show you that really I can't really experience from like what you've said today is your struggle with your hair. Never experienced anything like that. But the yeah, thing is, I'm not like, like and I've never experienced the struggle with my hair, so it's obviously just a you problem. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. You viewers, basically, me and Helena were supposed to do um this interview on Tuesday but I asked if we can move it to Thursday because I did not have my hair extensions in and I was like I don't want to go on camera with my afro I just don't want to. and I was going to but Helena was nice enough to say you feel confident <laughs> I didn't like how you like I don't want to be vain but you weren't being vain I feel like vanity I was being a little bit vain <laughs> it's not no the thing with like I, I, the thing, like, okay, I really don't like the word babe. And the reason I don't like the word babe is because there's nothing wrong with taking pride in your appearance. Yeah, that's true. The only issue comes when you put your appearance above other Every people. Girl. Yeah. That's but you're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that you want to look good, you want to feel good, and I support you. Yeah. I'm not going to be, oh, she's such a bitch because she wanted to get her hair done. <laughs> Yeah, and it is it is that thing as well of like it's a real thing. Like I don't want to sit with my two afro buns and my hair like a child because I you know that people are not going to view me in the same way. And but like, you can still look amazing whatever your hair looks like. But I know it's a, it's a yeah. you. It's for you, isn't it? It's like your sense of comfort. 
exactly okay so kind of to wrap up is there anything you would like to say or any advice you would like to give or anything that you would like to end on I want to say thank you because you are amazing and I love how much work you put in on your page I know it's not easy putting your heart on the line for people to watch and listen to you because you like on the internet you get a whole world of shit and it's so brave to like go out there and be like this is how it is and I'm so glad people are actually listening to you I'm really glad you let me like come here and spew my bullshit as well. <laughs> so. no, thank you. I was literally like, I really hope she wants to do this because I know she wants to say. And like I said, you are. Um, I'm, I love talking, so we'll carry on talking. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. We'll have to. What else do we want to rant about? <laughs> everything. World is going to shit. Let's talk about everything. everything. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, Helena, it's been amazing. I'm going to obviously type up some of this and put it in the magazine. If you want to mm. check out Helena's socials, if you want to get tattooed by her, I'll show you my tattoo again. Oh, I love oh, she cute, she cute. She's an Aquarius oh. water bearer. I yes, remember I my um, stick, stick figure drawing that I oh, said. My God, that was like the best thing. It literally, <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was like, she's my favourite client. It was <laughs> helpful it was so helpful obviously I can't see what's in your mind so I was like I'm so glad she sent me a little doodle of what she wanted it was perfect it was amazing it was I love chatting <laughs> her arms were like little sticks and they were so cute <laughs> you made it so much better <laughs> yeah your socials in case anyone would like to check you. I'm Helena Tattoos on Instagram and that's it <laughs> and she is amazing wonderful person and oh, so many incredible things on her platform as well as her amazing empowering artwork oh, oh. Anyway, thank you Helena. <laughs> thank i'm gonna you. stop recording now yay <laughs> <laughs>